In this lecture, we're going to look at the Ionic Tooltips module. This allows us to add a tooltip to our Ionic applications. And to get started, we first off need the Angular Animations module. So let's install that by saying npm install at angular slash animations. And we'll ensure to install the version 4.1.3. And that's because currently Ionic and Angular are using version 4.13 of Angular. You can change this in the future to match your other Angular dependencies, but for now it's 4.13. I'm also going to add dash dash save to this. I don't need to because I'm running NPM 5 and above, but you may need to do this if you're not running that. So now that we're happy that we have the correct version of Angular animations, and it matches our other Angular versions. And in order to confirm the current version of Angular that you're using inside of your project, check out your package.json and you should be able to see, for example, 4.1.3 here. After that, we can head back over to our command line and we can then, of course, install the Ionic Tooltips module. So let's say npm install ionic-tooltips and we'll add the save parameter once again. If everything worked correctly, you should see that the package was added. And then inside of our app module, we can import the browser animations module. Now the first thing to do is head over to our imports inside of our root app module.ts. And from within here, we can import the tooltips module. And that comes from Ionic Tooltips. So once you've done that, we can head over to our page. And in this sense, I will go to the home.html. Let's set up a basic application. So we'll say Tooltips. We'll change the color of the navbar to be primary. And in here, I want to add a few buttons. So we'll start off with a standard button that has an ion button attribute. Everything is standard for now, but we can also now add something called a tooltip. If we add the tooltip attribute and we pass along a particular string, for example, if we pass along tooltip without position, and the button text will simply be tooltip1. If we take a look at our app and we click tooltip one, you can see that we have tooltip without position and that appears simply on top of our button. Let's make ourselves another button, but this time we'll call it tooltip two. And in this sense, we will give it a position V. Now this will be the vertical position. And this can either be top or bottom. So we'll make one with the tooltip two of top and tooltip three of bottom. So we can rename this now to be tooltip position V top. And we'll do the same for this one, but instead we'll say bottom. We'll change the text to be tooltip top and tooltip bottom. So let's take a look. Let's click the tooltip top. And of course, now we can see that our tooltip appears on top. And if we click tooltip bottom, our tooltip appears on the bottom. This is the same for all operating systems. Let's do the same for our top. I'm going to take the top button and we'll copy paste this. And we'll say tooltip position V top and arrow. So in order to use the arrow, it's fairly simple. We can just add the arrow attributes. And now if we click that button, you can see that we get this tiny little arrow at the bottom of our box. In a similar sense to our position V, we can also use a position H. Now a position H can either be right or left. So I'm going to copy the two position top and bottom. We'll paste that and we'll replace the V for a H, one with the left, and the other for a right. If we take a look at this once again inside of our browser, 
and we click position hitch left and position hitch right, you can see that our tooltips appear to both the left and right of our buttons. Once again, we could add an arrow to this. So if we add the arrow to the right, So let's now click the tooltip position H and arrow. And as you can see, we have that arrow. This is all reflected when we look at it in the desktop view. So if we click here, we do see our right arrow. And over here, it is to the right, to the left, to the top with an arrow, the bottom, the top, and so on. We can add the duration. And then, of course, pass in a particular number of milliseconds. This defaults at 3,000, but if we put something in like 10,000, and we can say 10,000, if we click to our bottom tooltip here, you'd see that instead of lasting for 3 seconds, it would last for the full 10 seconds. Let's say we have a button and that button navigates us to a different page, we'd need a way to specify that a particular tooltip belongs to a nav button. So if we pretend for this moment in time, I'm going to copy this, I'll remove the duration for this one, and we pretend that this one is actually a nav button. So we'll say and nav. If this was a nav button, we can add the nav tooltip attribute, and what this does is it tells the module that this, of course, is a navigation button. And finally, we also have the ability to determine the particular event to show our tooltip on. Now we could add event is equal to, and we'll change this to be event instead of nav. And this can either be click or press. The default value of this is press. But of course, we can change this to click. Also, if we wanted to, we could take this tooltip here and we can bind this to a variable. So let's make a variable inside of our home.ts with tooltip text is equal to this is a tooltip. And instead of entering the text here in our markup, we can simply point it at that variable. And we'll call this one custom variable. If we now click our position H right arrow and custom variable, you can see that we do get this is a tooltip. And that comes from the variable inside of our component. So the Ionic tooltips module allows us to add tooltips to our project. And of course, it's quite powerful.